This is the Samsung S20 Ultra. It has a 100 megapixel camera that zooms 100 times from 13 millimeters to 1300 millimeters, and it does 8K video. I wanna put it up against my iPhone, which is the top end iPhone 11 Pro Max. It does a measly 4K 60 with a 12 megapixel camera. And then you brought something else to the table. I wanna see how it would compare to a similarly priced Canon EOS RP with a 24 to 240 millimeter lens. And this is 26 megapixels and 1080p 60 frames per second. It technically has 4K, but it's heavily cropped. This one has video that captures eight times the resolution of that big old camera. Not to overstate this, but I think my camera is going to kick yours butts and it will completely kill the entire camera industry. I'm pretty sick of Tony saying everything is dead. To prove him wrong, I brought him to do some wildlife photography with his 100 times face zoom. Whoa, this thing can zoom a lot. <laughs> we each just tried to get a picture of a bird and you got the bird in focus and you got it in the frame. While you were doing that, I was still like trying to find it in there and trying to zoom with my fingers. I think because you have an electronic viewfinder, you can hold it up to your eye and everything is kind of in line. You're able to find it really quickly. Yeah. It's really hard to zoom into 500 millimeters holding it out like this. Everything's all shaky because it's not rested against my face. We found some stationary birds for me to focus on, but the results still weren't good. The Samsung Space Zoom was better than the iPhone, but I gotta admit that I lost hard to the real camera, so I have to give this point to Chelsea. Oh my gosh, yours looks like impressionistic paintings. That doesn't even look like a bird. Look at mine. I also use program mode just because you wouldn't have to be a professional photographer or even know about your camera to get these results. So... So suck it, Tony. I win, you lose. Your space zoom sucks, and so do you. All right, let's try something a little closer. Okay. okay. The Samsung's 108 megapixel mode crushed the iPhone's 12 megapixels, making the text on the sign clearly readable. But my Canon's 26 megapixels look better than the Samsung because every real photographer knows the lens matters more than the megapixels. I win again. Can you match that? Well, I can't go as wide angle as you. You could change lenses, but I do have a super wide angle lens on both my cameras and there is no kit lens that lets you do telephoto oh, and go yeah. like 16 millimeters. I can't do it. Do you want to see this? Boom, boom. There, now I have a panorama and I'll stitch together in three seconds in Lightroom. Wrong, Chelsea. It took 56 seconds for Lightroom to stitch your panorama and it sucks. Lightroom couldn't stitch together the moving reads, which the iPhone handled perfectly without having to use a computer. Another win for my smartphone. Okay, you wanna see panoramas? Smartphone software is at least a decade ahead of traditional cameras, which allow smartphones to stitch together panoramas in real time, properly handling moving objects like these reads. Another point for smartphones. No Lightroom for me, I do it all in camera. It's ready to upload. How dare you mock me? Try to zoom with your camera all the way in on one of these reads as far as you can go. Is that about like you got? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, not the iPhone and the Samsung. The Samsung looks way better zoomed in. But look at mine. Yeah, that looks pretty 3D, but look at the Samsung, that's not bad. It's not bad. I'm sure there are people that would find that acceptable. Let's try some astrophotography. It's not the darkest night out. The moon is half full and there's a few wispy clouds in the sky, but I can see Orion. Let's see if these cameras can see it in night mode. For the wide angle handheld shots, the Samsung image looked better than both the Canon and the iPhone. The Canon has a bigger sensor that could gather more light, but with the Canon, I could only handhold a half second exposure. The iPhone and the Samsung use computational photography to allow me to handhold for more than eight seconds. Something nice about the iPhone, you don't have to put it into night mode, it just automatically detects it, but night mode doesn't work with the super wide angle lens, which is like really good for astrophotography. Now let's try all three on a tripod. Zoom in to show the details of the stars, and my Canon with its big glass and sensor produced much cleaner images, and your smartphones made the moon look like a blob. My Canon made the moon look gorgeous. Give the real camera another point. Portrait photographers like a big lens with a big aperture because they like that background blur in their portraits. It can remove distractions from the background. It has that beautiful creamy bokeh. 
Smartphones don't have a big lens that they can, that can do that, so they use computational photography to figure out what the background is and blur it artificially. Sometimes that looks good and sometimes it looks terrible. So let's see how the focus on the Samsung and the iPhone compares to the real camera. I think I got this one. I'm actually gonna make this challenge a little harder for you and put a fan on my hair. And let's see if you can handle it. <laughs> you look pretty cool. The processing on the smartphone photos suck. They're smart enough to detect the face and eyes and automatically apply processing, but they both overdo it. The iPhone makes me orange. The Samsung is better, but it still removes all the definition and shadows from my face. My Canon captures my real human skin and leaves it up to me, the photographer, to decide if I want to do any post-processing. This is a big win for a real camera. The Fokeh on the smartphone is good enough to fool you. If you're rapidly scrolling through Instagram or other social media, I would never print either smartphone photo though. Edges always become weird and blurry. The smartphone allows you to adjust the bokeh, even the lighting effects and posts, so at least your picture isn't permanently ruined. My Canon gets another point for having real bokeh. As for now, it just can't be beat. That's this one. Unlike the iPhone, the Samsung gives you focus for a video too, so you can simulate having a big lens on a video camera. At its most subtle settings, it looked okay, but the more powerful effects looked terrible. I love shallow depth of field video, but this didn't make me happy. Now let's go try some action. We wanna test the slow motion features and also the high frame rate capability for sports situations. Shameful. <laughs> that was humiliating. The Samsung has a 480 frames per second super slow-mo that didn't record sound and only records for 0.8 seconds. It's overkill anyway, but it's still a useful tool for vloggers capturing fast action. I got two in. You have a very short amount of time to capture the slow-mo, I think. That is upsettingly slow, I hate it. Let's do regular slow-mo. <laughs> okay. Samsung's regular slow motion does record sound, but it's always slightly out of sync. You almost always get flickering under artificial light, too. Okay, now I'm gonna try the iPhone. Go. Go. <laughs> Did not think that was I gonna be a problem. I have to chalk. You gotta chalk. Go. The iPhone does 240 frames per second or eight times slow mo. That's good enough for most people. I went through the menus and discovered that this only does 60 frames per second. So. I don't think it's worth even testing. Well, let's test the high frame rate stills. My Canon RP recorded only four frames per second, which meant it completely missed the point of impact. Hmm. That didn't sound all that impressive to me. I have the Samsung, you press the shutter button and slide it down. Let's try it and see how it works. By dragging the shutter button, you can take 10 photos per second on the iPhone and 21 on the Samsung. That's more than even a $6,500 professional sports camera. I don't think you can do the high frame rate when you're in manual mode. So I went into manual mode, I put my shutter speed up to try to completely freeze the action, and now I no longer have the ability to do the burst mode. Still, I have to give a point to the smartphones for their very high frames per second. Next, I tested handheld video stability. The Samsung wins. Handheld video looked like a tripod shot. The iPhone came in second. The Canon was the shakiest despite having a proper grip and lens stabilization. Another point for smartphones. Let's zoom in 400% to check video sharpness. The iPhone's 4K at 60 frames per second video blew away both the Samsung's 4K video and the Canon's HD video. The Samsung's 8K video looked the same as the iPhone's 4K, and it had a big crop. So it's safe to say that Samsung 8K is a gimmick. So let's add up the points and see who won. Wait, but first, we have to bring up some things that your tests don't include. All right, okay. first of all, my camera has actual designated buttons, which makes shooting far easier. My second point, this has an EVF, which means if it's a really sunny day, you can look through your viewfinder and still see your photo, not only while you're taking it, but while you're reviewing it, which can be a challenge on your phone. Another thing, the tilt screen. Oftentimes I want to get really low, like if you're shooting a reflection on some water or something, and the tilt screen is helpful if you're getting low. It's also helpful if you're holding your camera over your head to shoot above people or something like that. 
maybe at a concert. Speaking of concerts, another thing is that you can turn your screen around so no one else can see it. I'm gonna make another point, Tony, when I'm shooting with my camera, I never get a text message on it to distract me from my photography, and I consider that a bonus. Also gonna say, notice when you were trying to get a picture of birds, you couldn't quite get them in focus. In fact, I'd already taken pictures by the time you'd found them on your phone. I think that's it. How's the weatherproofing on your camera? Yeah, it's good. Can, can you, can you do that? Didn't see that coming, honestly. <laughs> what the heck? No, I can't do that. Okay, and for our final test, let's each share a picture to Instagram and just see how long that takes. Shit. I honestly don't have the patience to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, you have an app, but you haven't installed it because, why haven't you installed it? Well, it's technically possible, but I don't even want to deal with it. The app sucks. Everybody thinks the app sucks. <laughs> it's like unusable. I have a few more points too. I'm just going to pull up my notes here on notes? my camera because I have Google Docs that runs on my camera. Can you do that? No. You also don't have GPS. You don't have real-time cloud backup of photos. You don't have anti-theft measures. You don't have device tracking. You don't have live streaming video support. You can't do Bluetooth headphones or Bluetooth mics. You need a cord still. I win and you're a snob. No, I'm not. I think phones are great for taking photos. I do it all of the time, but it's more like a Swiss army knife. It works really well, it takes pretty good photos, it can do a whole bunch of other things, as you've stated, but this is a designated tool that is designed specifically to do one thing, and that's take pictures. And that's why the autofocus is so much better, and that's why the controls are better, and that's why it's designed for someone that knows how to use a camera so that you can push it to its limits. This is designed for someone that does not know how to take pictures. So it does a good job with no effort. This does a better job with some knowledge and some effort. Yeah, you're right. You can do things I can't do. I and if I needed to shoot sports or wildlife, I would have to pick up a camera like this. Absolutely. But everybody has to have a smartphone, right? No. We do. And if you're going to get a smartphone, you might as well get one with a good camera. If you want to spend 500 bucks on a camera, maybe instead you should spend an extra 500 bucks and upgrade to a smartphone with a better quality camera instead. But would you give up your A7R4 for either of those? No, I, I can't. Like, it's a special, it doesn't, these don't do everything that that does. Okay, so your points are moot. Comparing the two smartphones, the Samsung S20 Ultra definitely had the better overall camera on it. The telephoto lens actually works great for a smartphone and just really beat the iPhone. So I'm going to switch to it. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Why not? Because you're so not, because you are locked into a system. You got your Apple Watch on, you never take it off. You airdrop things to me and yourself. And then you have Apple CarPlay. You're too hooked into the system, baby. They got you. Our daughter would kill us if I turned the family group chat into green text. So the Samsung has the better camera, but Apple really provides more of a complete infrastructure. And because it's popular in this area, it's kind of hard for me to break out of it. You sheeple, you sheeple are all the same. <laughs> I love the Samsung. If you're an Android person, it's the better than the Pixel. It's the best camera we've ever tested. I'm sticking with the iPhone though. How did you like that Canon RP with the 24 to 240 as an Ooh, overall shooter? You know, I was actually so pleasantly surprised because I'm very spoiled. I shoot with an A7R3, A7R4, previously the Nikon D850, really high-end cameras, and this worked really well. If you like our videos and you'd like to learn more or just support us, you can check out our book, Stunning Digital Photography. It's got really good reviews. We tried really hard to make it. I think you're gonna like it. And if you just want free reviews and tutorials and stuff, subscribe. Add your comments down below with your thoughts on which you prefer and why. I know what to do. <laughs> you guys, you totally know what to do. Just do it. Okay, bye.